let me just ask you a question. Aren't, aren't you thankful that, that God just doesn't receive perfect people? You thankful for that? Are you thankful that God just doesn't receive like beautiful people, but he just says, look, come just as you are, right? Just come to me and trust me and I will lead you in all life and I'll receive you just as you are. Are you thankful for that? I am. Yeah, you can give the Lord a hand for that because here's, here's what we know, like, like all of us aren't beautiful people, right? I mean, you are. And just speaking for myself, okay, so, um, but he just says, come. And so I just want to say to you, um, if you're here and you just decide to drop in the, the you know, church on Easter Sunday because you, maybe you're looking for a church, uh, let me say this to you. Um, it, Gateway's not the perfect church. I'm just going to tell you that. So we, we fumble along a little bit every now and then. We, we, do, we do stumble every now and then. We try, but we, I believe that we can be perfectly in love with Jesus. And I believe that we can be healthy um, as we grow together. So I'm so glad that you're here and so glad uh, uh, that you're part of, of this day as we celebrate Jesus. So let me ask you a question as we get going here. Um, how many are old enough to remember this group of people called the power team? Anybody? There's a few of you out there. Okay. So back in the day when I was a student pastor, right, where's all my gateway students? Let me hear you guys. Natan, where are you? There you go. All right. Okay. Back when I was a student pastor, right, this power team was doing their thing. So they were um, going around to schools and to churches, you know, and they would do amazing feats of, of power. So like one of the things they would do is blow up um, a hot water bottle until it popped. You know, just like get like this big and finally it would pop and they, the dude would just keep blowing. Or else... Um, they would, they would tear big, massive phone books in half. It was crazy, you know, it was like, or they would lift incredible weights, you know, so they were called the power team because they, they did all these displays of power. And so nowadays we have you CrossFit people, right? Okay, let's hear about the CrossFit people. Right, they're the power people nowadays, right? Okay, I'm not into that weightlifting thing, you know, like whatever. But um, anyway, so I was thinking about the word power as we approach today. And so, um, and maybe some displays of power that you and I can relate to. So a couple of them, a few of them coming up on the screen here. So how about, how about this um, right here? Like when you think of power, do you think of that? Maybe like a plant growing through rocks, you know, it looks like it kind of split the rock maybe, or that type of a thing, but it looks so powerful. So what do you think of when, when I say the word power, what do you think? Maybe something like that. If you walk around the campus, um, you're going to find places that we need to repair now because roots have grown underneath these massive pieces of concrete. And guess what's happening? It's like pushing them up like a root, a root, you know, is pushing the concrete up. So we, we got to fix that. How about this? A lion? Like that's a display of power, right? Because like who wants to go up against a powerful lion? Nobody here for sure. Um, how about this right here? Superheroes, right? Okay, I mean, like, you put the cape on, right? Or you put the mask on, and suddenly you become Spider-Man or Superman or one of these superheroes, and you become powerful, right? <clears throat> How many, back in, I'm, now I'm kind of a tennis shoe geek, and I, I blame my mother for it, for no other reason than I need to have someone to blame, and she's with Jesus now. So anyway, <laughs> um, so... Uh, uh, but you, how many times did you, uh, you have to be honest now, um, because you're in church, that's why. And how many times you got, a, as a kid, you got a new pair of shoes, and you thought you could run faster and jump higher? Raise your hand, right? That's like probably all of us, right? I got these new shoes, mom, thank you very much. I can run faster, and I can jump faster, right? They give me like some kind of a superpower thing right there, okay? How about this one right here? How about like catastrophic type events, earthquakes? Whew. Wow. I li listened last night to a documentary about earthquakes. And of course, in the Pacific Northwest, what are we waiting for? We're not waiting for it, but we hope it never happens. What's it called? Yeah, the big one. Exactly right. When this, this thing happens. And some of you are from other parts of the country and you've experienced, you know, like hurricanes and tornadoes and these, these type of things. And so that's kind of a display of power. How about the, the mind? Sometimes we kind of think like the power of positive thinking, right? And like, like, you know, I mean, I'm 
I'm, I'm okay with thinking positive and, and all of those things, but the power of positive thinking. Well, here's what I want to say. All of these displays of power, are you ready, are just short-term wins. Think about it. They're just short-term wins. It, it just feels like that in this world that we live in, like we're in this competition, right, this, 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 this pull of this power struggle that we are in, in in all of life. And the danger is that we fall into an illusion of what I'm going to call a short-term wins. And these are just short-term wins. Why? Because eventually the plant or the root dies. And it's no longer powerful. Eventually the lion either dies or, or kills, is killed by another lion and it's, it's a short-term win. The superhero with the cape on suddenly discovers at some point in life that like I don't really have those superpowers and you know like your tennis shoes aren't going to make you run faster or jump 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 higher really you know um, or we survive a catastrophic event the power of that only to face potentially another one and positive thinking it's it's, it's not bad but in the end we all grow old and we all die because someone said like the only two things in life that you can be sure of is what? Death and taxes. Yeah, thank you, man. Death and taxes. Now, for sure, the death, taxes, whatever, there, you know. So, but, but, for, but for sure, death. I, um, I read a story this, this past week. It's, it's really kind of, a, I think, a power story. It was in ESPN and about a, a football player named Rob Conrad. And he did something that I just can't even imagine in, in my head. I'm going to tell you this story here in a second. But it, he experienced what I, what I will call a short-term win. It's a huge win. Here's what happened. Um, he was out. He used to play for the Miami Dolphins. He was out fishing by himself. And he caught apparently pretty good-sized fish, or he caught a fish anyway. And so he was tending to the fish like on this side of the boat. And when he was doing so, a big wave came over. And, and hit the boat and pitched him into the water. The, the problem is, I, I guess a boat can have automatic pilot, autopilot, and so he had it in an autopilot, so the boat kept on going. And he's in the water without any life jacket or anything, so he's tried swimming to the boat, but it's outpacing him. He can't get to the boat. He's out in the middle of the ocean, no, no life jacket. Now, for me, that's a nightmare right there because I'm a non-swimmer, like... If I'm going to be swimming, I'm going to have the wings, you know, the, th the wings thing, you know, that, that thing right there, or the little floaty thing or whatever. Um, so that's me. So I can't imagine that. And he, but, but here he was, and so he began to swim. Um, he began to think of his girls and, you know, his, his wife, and it just encouraged him to go and continue swimming um, throughout the night, um, there was a boat that came 50 yards from him, from saving him, but it didn't see him. A rescue helicopter pointed its um, big spotlight right at him, but didn't see him. And when that happened, he talks about being so, so, so discouraged. I mean, like, who wouldn't? But he keeps on swimming. He swam for 16 hours. 27 miles. Now, to kind of put that in perspective, um, 27 miles for us would be like from here to like almost Belfair. But I mean, Belfair is like 29 miles or something like that. So he'd like swim from here to Belfair. I can't, I couldn't swim like from here. I couldn't swim out of the building here. You know, he swims that, that, that far. Um, and he was bitten by stuff and, and um, sharks were surrounding him and all these things. But, but he made it. He made it. Well, let me ask you a question. Did, did Rob Conrad win? You can say yes. Because I will say yes. Yeah, 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 he, he did. Was he able to find the strength and the power to battle, um, uh, the power for the battle that he was in? Yes, yes. That, he did. That, that day he did. But what about the battle to come? And that's what I want to talk to you about. It's a battle that all of us Face. I'm going to call that as amazing as it, as it was, and it was, a short-term win. Because here's the, here's the reality. We are all there, every one of us. 
And our illusion of winning is just that. It's an illusion because in the end, we have no power to save ourselves. We have no power. No matter how many wins that you can line up in life. I mean, many of you have, right? So um, you're successful. You've won at business. You look really good to all of us. Or you, you, you have just mastered life. You have just figured it out. I mean, if there is perfection, yeah, it's, it's you. Because you, you have lined all of these wins up and you really look good good. You've done it, and you've succeeded. But listen, this life is just a bunch of short-term wins because there's a final battle called life and death. And guess what today is all about? It's all about victory over the final battle that you and I have no power to win. And that's what I want to talk to you about. Christ's victory over the grave, assures us that we too are victorious. Yes? Amen. That's why we respond when He is risen. He is risen indeed, because He alone is victorious over this grip of death that all of us were born into. Think about this way. I'll show you a picture, a little tug of tug of war thing here. Like, how many have ever played tug of war? Now, probably all of us, right? In some form or fashion, we have played tug of war. Like, maybe even like this as a kid, where we run up and we grab, grab the rope, and uh, what do we do if you're on one side or the other? What do we do? As te- we are calling for who? Strong, big, CrossFit-type people, right? Yes? That, w- that will be on your side, or at least anchor your side, because what do you want to do? You want to win the battle. Exactly right. That's what you want. Or maybe you haven't never played tug of war this like, like this, but you have a dog, and the dog wants the ball, and you're playing tug of war with your dog, right? You'll never admit to anybody that that's what you do, and that's what I do. It's this, it's this battle that, that we're in. Someone or something is going to win, at least in the short term. I don't know if you've ever read Scripture or read the story that I'm going to read to you right now and kind of viewed it as a tug of war, but I do. Let, let me kind of set it up for you in John chapter 18. So over the last number of weeks, we've been, we've been um, in John. And so in John chapter 18, beginning with verse 19, um, let, me just, let me just read it to you this way. Here, here, here's the set. Begin verse number 28. Um, and, and if you have a If you're a Bible reader um, and you've seen this, there's a title above this part of the chapter. It says, Jesus is before Pilate. So that's what's going on here, right? And I'm just just suggesting to you that what we're viewing here is kind of a a tug of war that's going on, a struggle for power. And I think that you'll see that. But let let me just set it up just by reading a few verses. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled, but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? And they answered him, If this man were not doing evil, and now you can kind of see the setup for this tug of war, what I'm calling tug of war. If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. And Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, it's not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken to show what kind of death that he would die. And so we're going to pick it up there. Just kind of let me walk you through this tug of war that's going on. So in verse 33, it begins with this question. That Pilate asks this question, are, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus responds this way, Is this your question, or did others tell you about me? In other words, now I don't think Jesus would have said this necessarily, but it came to my mind, responding to Pilate, what are you doing? Are you thinking on your own? Because we taunt back and forth on the tug of war robe, right? And so, like, you thinking on your own there, Pilate, or did others tell you this about me? And so in verse 37, Pilate says, so you are a king. 
And then Jesus says, you say I am a king. Actually, I was born into the world to testify to the truth. Jesus clarified that his kingdom is not like Rome's. It's a kingdom of, of truth that overshadows all others. And if you were with us last week, we, we talked about truth, capital T. And truth is not a concept. Truth is a person. His name is, is Jesus. And it's only through Jesus can you win this ultimate battle that we are all in. And then Pilate asked this question that's often repeated, and I, I think probably like if I were to ask you like, okay, what's the big question that Pilate asked? I, I think that most of us would probably guess, a lot of us would, he says it's like, what is truth? Looks at Jesus, what is truth? And like we talked about last week, he asks the question, then he walks away. And then he declares that Jesus is not guilty of any crime. And it's interesting because in verse 38, he says this. He says, I find no, no guilt in him. Just imagine how he's talking to all these people. Imagine this tug of war, the thing that's going on here. I don't find any guilt in him. And what happens? Kind of in, in my, my mind, people run to the rope and they begin to grab a hold of it and demand the win by releasing a criminal instead of Jesus. Look, Pilate, we're not going to let you get away with that. We demand that you crucify him and that you release a criminal instead of Jesus. Verse number 40. Though so Pilate has Jesus flogged. It's a, it's a cruel punishment. We know that. And the soldiers wove this crown of thorns and put it on his head along with a robe, and then they mocked him. Pilate once again brings Jesus out to them and declares again that Jesus is not guilty and followed by more shouting, or what I'm just calling like hands on the rope, like you can't do that by our law. He, he's got to die. He's, he's got to die. And in the following ex exchange, in chapter 19, verse 10, Pilate takes his best shot. And he, here's what he says right here. He says, don't you realize that I have the, what everybody say? Power, Power to release you or crucify you. You see what he's doing? He's looking at, at, at Jesus and going like, you don't understand how much power I have here. In some of the versions that you have, it says authority, right? You don't realize the authority, you don't realize the power I have over you. Or in other words, listen, Jesus, look, at, I'm the one who determines who wins this battle that we are in right now. I'm the one who decides who wins, and I'm the one who decides who loses. That's what's going on here. It's like Pilate's on the end of the rope, kind of like anchoring the rope and saying, I will win. Truth is, as one commentator <laughs> stated it, Pilate had some power, but he was just a pawn. I like that. He had some power, but he was just a pawn. See, Jesus responded this way. You would have no power over me unless it was given to you from above. Jesus looked on Pilate as checked by the hand of God. You think you have power. The only power you have is what was given to you anyway. And Pilate was simply an instrument in the divine purpose of God. But here's what happened. Verse number 16. Then Pilate, uh, chapter 19, then Pilate turned Jesus over to them to be crucified. I kind of took some time this week to think about Pilate. I don't know if you ever have. And like what, what happened afterwards? He, he turned him over to be, what happened to, where did Pilate go? There, there are different thoughts out there. I, I, I couldn't even tell you, I don't think, definitive what happened. Some, some, some suggest that maybe he took his own life. Some su suggest he just, he just retired. But here's what happened in this moment. For Pilate and for this crowd, this would be a short-term win. This would be a short-term win. And that's why you and I are here today. Because as Pastor S.M. Lockridge 
said so well in the Easter meditation, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. It's Friday, but Sunday's coming. This would be a short-term win. And Jesus on the cross said, it is finished, and on this day, we celebrate that the power of death has been broken in your life and in my life. And that's a great place to say amen. That's a great place to just stop and pause like the, this, this power, this power that Pilate thought he had not only paled in light of what Jesus was ab about to do, it was really, it, it, it couldn't do what he had hoped to do and others hoped to do. Jesus said, it's, it's finished. It was and is the greatest display of power mankind has ever experienced. And if you are a follower of Jesus, you have experienced the power of God to forgive your sins. He grants you a brand new life. There is no other power that can do that. There is no other win that can do that. You can line up as many wins as you want in all of life. You can be as good as you can be, and you can do all the good that you can do, but those are short-term wins. In the end, it's the power of the cross that wins. And I will just tell you that for me, like that's my passion to tell people, like you all, we, we get trapped into this illusion that we're doing good, we're doing good, we're doing good, and we're winning. But unless we've experienced the power of the cross and power of the resurrection, it's just a short-term win. Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 9, but very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. So they went in, but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. As they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them, clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. Then the men asked, why are you looking around among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He has risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and that he would rise again on the third day. Can I just stick something in here that just came to my mind? I think he was trying to tell them, like, they're going to think that they won. But I'm telling you, they didn't and they won't win. Back to the scripture. Then they remembered that he had said this. So they rushed back from the tomb to tell his 11 disciples and everyone else what had happened. Death had been defeated through the power of his death and resurrection. Amen. Listen, amen. Listen to 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 15, verses 54 through 56. Then when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die. This scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Where is your power? Oh, death, where is your sting? For sin is a sting that results in death, and the law gives sin its power. But thank God, he gives us victory or power over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The, the truth is, all of us are on like one side of the rope or, an, or another. That's where, that's where we are. And if, 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 if you've never experienced what, what, what we're talking about and trying to convey to you that there's, there's only one power that can overcome the sin that we have born into life, you're going to have the opportunity at closing today to receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior Romans chapter 8, verse 3, for what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering, and so he condemned sin in the flesh. And I love what Paul says in Romans chapter 1, for I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. And here it is, it is the what? The power. Everybody say power. It's the power of of God at work saving everyone who believes to the Jew first 
and also to the Gentile. This good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish. As the scriptures say, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. Here's the good news. Jesus has come. Amen? And this power struggle between life and death, we're victorious because of what he has done. And it's not a short-term win. You know why it's not a short-term win? Because eternity is just an offing for every one of us. So we might think that we win in this life. We might think that we win. But unless we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, it's just a short-term win. It's just a short-term win. So I'm going to invite you to stand right now, and here's what we're going to do. We're going to worship together, and we're going to sing, and we're going to declare this power that is available to you and to me. Many of us will sing it as an affirmation of what we've already experienced. We've experienced His power. Aren't you thankful that it has nothing to do with how good we are? We can't be good enough. That's just short-term win. But we can trust ourselves to Jesus and be assured that we will spend eternity with Him.